Yeah, in fact, many places in the Philippines that we visited, they had never seen surfing. And they used to tap on the surfboard and, because they would see a fin, they would call it bating. You know? Bating, yeah, yeah. Bating, you know, or um, Stephen Scott, um, a surfer who used to surf in the Philippines back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. I lived there continuously from 1972 to 1974. That's when I did most of my exploring around 1980, 84, 1989, two, I think it was 92 or 94, somewhere in there. And, and, then, uh, um, and then I stopped going for a while because I started surfing other places. I originally got there via my father. My father worked for, for the Department of the Navy and he was assigned to QB Point, Civic Naval Base up in Alonso, Zambales. I really didn't have a choice since that was his job. Our whole family moved there. Yeah, I think I was 15. That was interesting time. That was interesting because that was right before they declared martial law. I had already started surfing in California. When the people came to box up all our stuff to move it to the Philippines, I could only take one surfboard. The only surfboard I had was like a, a 610 single fin. My father was not really enthusiastic about me surfing. When we got to the Philippines, we actually moved to a little, a little town uh, on the way from Alangapo going towards Subic City. There was a place called Matayan, so we moved into a house there. That was my uh, first born in the Philippines. Unfortunately, I broke it in half in the first six months. And back then it was very difficult to get materials to repair ah, surfboard. Right yeah, in fact, many places in the Philippines that we visited, they had never seen surfing. And they used to tap on the surfboard and, because they would see a fin, they would call it bating. You know? Bating, yeah, yeah. Bating, you know, or, or they call it an airplane wing. There was a program for high school students called Work Study. You went to different organizations or departments on the base and you would have a job. You actually got paid. You got paid minimum uh, wage. Uh, Whatever it was back then, I think it was like 75 cents or a dollar. <laughs> I forget. So my first job was working fiberglass repairs. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it was perfect. The river patrol boats that they were sending back that were damaged during the Vietnam War, they would send them to Subit from Vietnam and they would unload them there and it was called Ship Repair Facility. They would repair the boats there and send them back. So my job was sanding fiberglass holes. They were made out of fiberglass and, and plywood. We were lucky because the other surfers who lived at Subic, they didn't have access to boards either. All the boards were all beat up. It was, it was hard to get boards over there. So I, for you had to have a project. That was one of the things. So what we ended up doing, my project, is I created a, a mold for pouring oh. foam, surfboard foam. <laughs> because, because when they repaired the boats, the foam that they used for repairing boats was the same two-part mix foam that they make for surfboard blanks okay but what we didn't have was the high pressure screw down pre-shaped mold oh. so we just made it square it was like about it was like a six inch block by 24 inches wide and uh, we made two of them one was uh seven foot long and the other one was eight foot long that way we can make different size boards from those two the guys who worked at the shop and the, the foreman they had never seen this done either okay so it was new <laughs> to them too polyurethane foam when you do a two-part mix yeah. you pour it into anything it's very sticky it, it the outside shell is sticky and it'll stick to anything so we had to figure out a way to keep it from sticking on the inside of the mold. They wanted to use grease. I think first it was WD-40 or something like that. Okay, some type of spray that had oil in it. You know, it was so stinky our first one. We go, now we gotta find something else. Somebody 
showed us this spray that came in a can that they use in frying pans. So we ended up using vegetable oil. So we would spray the inside of the mold with that. And then we would go ahead and do our two quart mix, pour it in the mold, uh -huh. and hurry up and like slam it down and spin all the big the big nuts down so it wouldn't, you know, come out. And we had one little wheat pole so it wouldn't explode. You know, so it like it would kind of uh -huh. kind of ooze out a little bit. And then uh once it's set, you know, we let let it sit in there for like 24 hours and then we'd pop it out of there. Then we'd take it over to the wood shop right next door. They would have them cut it in half lengthwise, glue in a stringer. What was the only wood that we had back then? It was mahogany and yeah. teak. You know, that was the like, only two woods that you could have available there. I think maybe they had spruce also, but it, you know, spruce was so stringy, it's hard to shape. So we'd go ahead and have them cut it, glue it together, and then we shape our own blank, shaping our own surfboards there on base. Yeah, and then uh, the other funny thing is that we didn't have access to all the good stuff. <laughs> so yeah. our first, our, our first, I think our first four boards were all solid black, you know, because um, the patrol boats that they oh. use in Vietnam, the sides of them were all black. It was so hard to keep uh, wax on the deck because, you know, black absorbs heat. Yeah. So even sitting in the water, you know, the sunlight, you know, it hit the black and uh, it was, it was it was kind of funny. It was kind of funny, but after afterwards, we were able to talk them into letting us use the good stuff. So those were the first surfboards that we we made, and we just you know we just made our own. You know, we took copies, took measurements from other boards that people had that were kind of like destroyed, but you could still get the measurements, and we did it all that way. Made our own boards. In fact, the first surfboard that I gave. I didn't give it to Raul. I left it in Balair when I left. I could tell you about Apocalypse Now. The whole diff that's a whole different story, but we were the ones that showed them where Balair was. Really?